today we're interviewing John Dickow. I met John three years ago when I was in Toronto celebrating my second heart anniversary. John had just had a heart transplant and a day after he was awake and him and I met. I also met his wife Lynn. Uh, John is a, an exceptional person. He's a semi-professional actor. We, I, I was actually at one of his shows last night. It was it was fantastic. It was, it was a comedy, um, and it, it, it was really a lot of fun. Now, the one special thing about John is John has actually met his donor family. In Ontario, uh, the Trillium Foundation makes it anonymous through organ donation. John somehow tracked down his donor family. We're going to discuss that with him. We're going to find out uh, how he did that. We want to know the emotions involved with that. John has done a, a 10K uh, marathon. He's done a 5K run, uh, all in regards to his donor. His donor is Adam. So this discussion today is brought to you by my donor, who's anonymous, and Adam. And we thank you both for thinking about somebody else in, in such a tragic time and allowing us both to live on. Please enjoy the conversation I'm about to have with John. Um, <laughs> you are one of the, the unique people that I've ever spoken with who actually knows your donor family. Um, and this is amazing to me. I've, I've, I've done a little bit of background. I've, I've, um, I've looked at your donor and uh, um, a little bit with the, the family yep. sort of thing when, when you and I first talked about it. But uh, please, share. Yes, I mean, it's a, there's tons of pieces to the story, but, you know, how it came about, um, there was a lot of luck involved, and, and it was fortunate that we, we both, both the families had similar philosophies about things, about life, and, and, and people and communication and all that sort of stuff, which made it helpful. But so basically, what happened was, I was extraordinarily grateful, as I think all of us are, our transplant recipients. But I needed, I, I desperately needed to express that gratitude, and so I. I it was as soon as I possibly could, I wanted to write them a letter of thanks. Um, that's just, that's me. Um, so I think it was two weeks post-transplant, um, or two weeks after I was home. No, two weeks post-transplant, that's right. It was um, that quick after? You wrote your letter? Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, I wrote a first draft. It took a couple drafts because I had way too much information in the first line. Okay, okay. And, uh, but I whittled it down so that it didn't give any ID, blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, you know, and at that time, I didn't care if I heard back or not. I, I mean, of course I wanted to. Sure. But I didn't, it, that wasn't important. The important part was I got it out there and expressed to them how much this gift meant to me. And just to give them some, some idea of what it meant to, to my family. Um, and to, to share that gratitude. <laughs> About two months later, I got a response, and it was just beautiful. It was a beautiful, beautiful letter, and there was a little hint in it. The mom, my daughter's mom, said, uh, we'd be interested in knowing your progress, you know, and how you're doing, right. if you could share. So, to me, that was a bit of an opening, um, that there may be an interest in communicating, um, but I didn't know if that was possible. But then I, in the letter, there was a, a, lot of, a few clues. They had an opportunity, we were allowed to, I guess, uh, share some of the story of their son. Right. And it was from that that I put some of those clues, typed it into Google, and I think it was like five words. But, you know, I knew the date, obviously, that he had passed. Yeah. So I put like, obituary, January 24th, 2016. Um, Young, young man, hockey player, whatever. Some of the clues that they put. Uh, yeah. I think I wrote celebration of life because the, the dad had said that they learned some things about their son at the celebration of life. And up pops this obituary. It was the first hit on Google. And I looked at this picture and I started to read the thing and I thought, this is him. This, yeah. is, this is my donor. Um, and that was a 
That was a... That was a crazy, crazy moment. Because we all have this gratitude for an entity. And we know it's a person, we know there's a story and a family involved, but to read it and see a picture, and that was overwhelming. Um, so I just felt if there's any way I could be in contact with them, I wanted to do that. So I, uh, I, I looked on Facebook and I found, you know, from the name of the uh, of my donor, I found the Facebook page of his his dad and mom. And, his dad was quite active on Facebook, and and so was my my donor Adam. And so I just I learned so much about them and, and had a f good feeling about that they probably would would be relatively receptive. So I took a chance and I created a fake Facebook account. Well, first a fake email account so I could register for a fake. Right, right. It's still out there, but it's inactive. It's called Heart First Name Heart Second Name Recipient. Oh, okay, cool. That was the Facebook page I created. I just there was no pictures except a picture of a heart or whatever on this profile picture. And uh, and it's funny because talking to my donor now laughs because he thought, who is this poor person? They only have one friend <laughs> because he was my only friend. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. Right, right. Um, but anyway, so I sent him in. I still kept it anonymous because it was through this fake Facebook page with no name attached. <laughs> And I said, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm your son's uh, heart recipient. And right. If there's any interest on your side in connecting, I would love to. If not, I'll never talk. I'll never contact you again, except through the Triumph Gift of Life Network. And so that's how it began, and uh, and it's been a beautiful, beautiful friendship and, and relationship since then. Um, getting to know them, and they've been very supportive, and and you know. We, we each respect each other's space, um, mm -hmm. but we also have become close. You know, it's, you know we share a pretty, uh, <laughs> yeah. pretty important thing. Right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, and and again, you know, we we always stress, especially for for a heart transplant, lung transplant. Um, there's no life without that's right. that donor. Um, You've done a couple of runs. Yeah, yeah. So I was, uh, like, you know, I did. I was pretty pumped about getting myself healthy as quickly as I could post transplant. And at about, I don't, I think it must have been about four months or something. I had my first stress test, treadmill stress test, and uh, I knew when I did it, I rocked it. Yeah. Because um, you can tell, you know, looking at the people watching you, and they're keep pumping up the mm -hmm. pumping her up and I'm handling it and felt fine and so I saw Stella and uh, she had a big smile on her face you know, tell, talking to me about the results and so that day I decided to do a walk around the hospital just to see if there's people around kind of like what you do when you know to see if there's other patients around because this would have been yeah like the three or four months and ran into Dr. Ross which I was hoping I would and uh, I kind of uh, just said to her, hey, did you see the results of my stress test? And she said, yes. And she got a big smile on her face. She said, are you going to the transplant games? And, I, and, and as you know, you're not supposed to go into your one year post. That's right. Um, and the transplant games were happening at my, I was only about six months post, but she already said, yeah, you can do it. Yeah. So I did, a five, I did the 5K run in uh, six months post transplant. Yeah, in good time too. Yeah, too. Was like, that's, time, yeah. yeah let's, let's be honest, <laughs> right? Um, it was a pretty good time. And you did another run, 10k. Yeah, yeah I did a 10k in this past March in yeah. Ottawa. Yeah. Um, that's a long story, but the the short version is because of one. I wrote this list um, when I got listed the week after I got. On, put on the list. I wrote a, on the transplant list. I wrote a list of things I would do if I survived. Um, one was to become a pref professional actor. Great. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. But one um, to test my limits, as Dr. Ross likes to say, was to see if I could run 10K in under 60 minutes. Great. Which I, I had never done before, but I thought, well, Adam's heart and I should be able to get that done. Mm -hmm. Anyway, 
So linking those two stories, I when I started my starting to trying to become an actor, um, I submitted an application to be in a student film and I got the role and I was talking to the director one day about my story and how I became an actor blah 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 and I mentioned this list and he, he just went and it was a, these Niagara College students in Welland where I was living and uh, he asked me have you done the 10k yet and I said no 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 it's gonna take some time I have to train for it I was thinking this past summer probably yeah and he said well he pitched the idea to the school to do a documentary about my list and my story and this. And so they actually made arrangements. He said, do you think you could do it by spring? And this was in February or, or late January or something. I said, well, I could try. I, I don't know if I'll make 60 minutes. That's not much time to train. Um, so they made arrangements and found this race that was in Ottawa, which is where my donor's family lived. Um, so it was a pretty big deal, and uh, I didn't make the, sorry, spoiler alert for those who haven't seen the documentary, but I didn't make the time, but I ran the race, and they were there, and I mean, CTV News showed up, and it was a pretty big deal. In fact, it was on the news in Australia. I should show you that clip. Yeah. It's crazy. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> amazing, so right? Old. Everybody picked it up. Um, and I since, by the way, have done the, on the treadmill. I, uh, I decided one day, okay, this is the day I'm just going to do it. So I cranked up the speed, and I did uh, my 10K in under 60 minutes. So. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I yeah. had to. I had to. It was on the list, right? Yeah. <laughs> and now let's, I just want to add to this for people that aren't aware of transplant. Mm. But um, the old ticker doesn't pick up like it used no. to, does it? No, nope. that's right. And that, and that was one of the things with the, with the race that was really important about the training and stuff is, so technically, and I'm not sure of exactly the medical, how it works, but basically we have these nerves, that I believe it's the sympathetic and parasympathetic nerves that control your fight or flight response. Mm -hmm. um, they're the ones that make your nostrils get big and you get the adrenaline pumping and you, the hair on your back stands up and so yeah. what else would I do? <laughs> it also makes your heart beat faster so that you have blood rushing to everywhere so that you can run away or fight. When they remove the heart, those nerves are all severed and they don't go back. So transplant heart transplant patients don't have that that those, those nerves that fire the heart up. Mm -hmm. So we have to be very, very careful to um, warm up and, and slowly get the heart pumping because it, it's it's basically the physical now motion of running that the that the brain and heart say oh hey we gotta we gotta get more blood to these places that's right <laughs> but you have to really take your time to warm up <clears throat> so that's why something like a 10k race you gotta start slow make sure you warm up fast <clears throat> um, and and taking off on a sprint would probably be a really bad idea without <laughs> without lots of warm up where you'd fall flat in your face that's right so pass out or whatever so that's uh yeah it's it, it, it is and that's why you know it is an achievement it's 10k for for let's say quote unquote a healthy person is an achievement yeah a 10k <laughs> for a heart transplant patient uh less than three years out uh in my professional heart transplant <laughs> opinion is more than is more than an accomplishment I, and and i know because i train um i do hikes and all that sort of stuff and I appreciate exactly where it is you're coming from. Yeah. So, and I mean, you wouldn't know unless yeah. you had a heart transplant. Yeah. Um, so, Adam, what what else? What, what oh, else? Oh gosh, you know that's such a really. It's not even fair for me to tell Adam's story because he's it's just such a remarkable. He was such a remarkable person in his own way, and and uh, it's you know. This, the, this, yeah. the word special comes out. I was just about to say, such a special yeah. word. Yeah. As, yeah. Yeah. Music. Yeah. Talk about there? the song. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, um, so, the, the one big part of this story, I mean, a couple things. He was a huge Superman and Batman, in particular, fan, and uh, his mom gave me this ring that I think the second time we met. Uh, 
Um, and I don't, I don't take it off very much because it's a reminder of what a superhero he is to me every day. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things, he had gone through some very rough years as a child. He uh, had uh, a couple of seats and had two very painful uh, brain surgeries. They thought they had cured it. And uh, after some months of being seizure free, um, he was in a hot tub with some friends and they left for a few minutes to go get some snacks or beer or something, whatever. And left him alone for about 10 minutes. When they got back, he had had a seizure and drowned in the hot tub. Oh boy. Um, and yeah, it's just, just. But he's had, he had this tough. But very resilient and remarkable life, and uh, had gone through some changes um, himself. And, um, I'm just so fortunate and grateful that uh, that his family made their choice and his choice uh, have come together with me. <laughs> yeah, and I just wanted to add a couple things yeah. to that. When I when I um. Uh, when I was introduced to Adam's father through yeah. you on Facebook, um, you know, him and I spoke briefly. I, I, I believe it's going back some yeah. time ago, um, and uh, I looked at a bit to do with Adam's page. Now, uh, this is a remarkable young man here. He's he's got quite a following. He um, some very very interesting um, aspects of this this young fellow on his page, and and. Um, um, some really remarkable comments on there from his friend base. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. and and um, um, and now that's another part I like to touch on. Um, we get this opportunity to carry on yeah. with this life, yeah. and um, we go back and we see these remarkable yeah. people that have given this this unbelievable gift. I mean, there's no there's no words to classify the gift. Um, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you said it. It's a, it's just a, it's a, it's remarkable. It's overwhelming. Um, it's it's. As much as we try, you cannot put into words the, the immense gratitude for that gift. I mean, we don't know, but there's a good chance you and I would not be sitting here today. Uh, yeah, I, certainly I, not in this state. Yeah, I wouldn't be. Um, I, I was. I, there was no way for me. You know. So, um, it's amazing, isn't it? It is. How do you? How do you? How do you put that into words? We would probably be dead mm -hmm. <laughs> if, if not for uh, somebody making a very selfless and very easy decision to sign up to be a friggin' donor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, Taking yeah. it with you. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> right. But but it's it's so important. And, and yeah, how do you how do you if there's ever if there's the one person I want to meet someday. If and whenever I go, hopefully we're in the same place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll see. Yeah. Um, well, boy, would I like to say thank you. So. There's a lot of different theories, um, and a lot of people have a lot of different reactions to to their donors and and, and the miracle that is mm -hmm. that has taken place. Um, on some of the transplant pages, I, I see quite a bit of reaction from, let's say, a, a mom um, for a recipient, like right. someone who's received. Um, I also see a lot from donors' families mm. who are are longing for that yeah. that that outreach. Right. Yeah. What do you think about that? I I think I, what I wish was, I wish there was some kind of system for vetting um, donors and recipients and, and figuring it out rather than just saying, no, we'll have nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. You're on your own. Um, and it's not like it's discouraged. It kind of is, but it's, it's just nobody wants any responsibility for, because I mean, there's libel reasons, right? You never know. Somebody 
you don't know what they've gone through. You don't want to cause pain. There's also the issue of, you know, maybe somebody might feel like, well, you owe us something. And I don't know if that's part of it, mm -hmm. but I, th I think the the organizations that are involved, whether in Ontario it's the Trillium Earth of Life Network and, and even the hospitals and stuff, they just don't want to be responsible for causing pain or grief to be increased by making the connection. And if there could be, there could be these bad situations, but boy, oh boy, the good ones, when it's a match, there is nothing like it. I mean, I've heard a few interviews on, on the CBC not too long ago. There, there was a uh, two families interviewed that had connected. Uh -huh. And it was the same kind of stories that, you know, it's unbelievable gratitude and how they have become close. And, um, and it's not going to be for everybody, but I really believe that there should be an opportunity to some kind of mechanism for getting them together if it's a match. I mean, frig, we can, we have, there could be a, <laughs> there's lots of dating sites. Oh, yeah. Let's yeah, yeah. <laughs> get a yeah. heart transplant donor. Recently. Well, that's, and, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's valid. Thing. For sure. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think another valuable aspect to that is by you getting involved um, and by being able to meet your donor family. I mean, look at the awareness you brought yeah. up. Yeah, no that, question. Like Australia is very, very pro donate, yes. pro. Yeah. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're pro a lot of things, really. Um, but not, you know, not so much in Canada. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean. Um, well, I think the stats, latest I've heard, are ninety percent of Canadians agree. That don't organ donation is a great thing. Mm -hmm. Twenty percent are registered to be donors. Yeah, which is mind blowing to me. And and you know, frankly, my belief is it should be an opt out, not an right. opt in system. Yeah, you're you're a donor until you say you don't want to be. What's so what's wrong with that? Well, there was there was a there was a bill on the table, and, and we're not going to bring politics into this at all. But there was a bill on the table, and unfortunately, for whatever reason, it, it, it was canceled when the new government came in. But it was actually an opt out, not an opt in. Um, and um, I mean, we all know how the the, the wheels of, of politics work. So for whatever yep. reason, it didn't work out. But um, 